What's good y'all, it's your boy Ross back at again with another video. So we're gonna check out WWE finishers that had to be instantly changed. Now, a wrestler's finisher is supposed to be devastating, supposed to be impactful. When someone hits their finisher, you're supposed to know or have that feeling the match is over, this looks believable, it looks like it would knock someone out, and that's what a good finisher should consist of. But sometimes a finisher can be too dangerous to the point where it may has to be, where it may have to be modified or changed so that way the wrestler that's taking the finisher doesn't actually end up getting seriously hurt uh or injured or you know even worse you know so we're gonna check this out uh should be an interesting one by wrestlemania appreciate all the love and support let's get right into this one man a finisher is supposed to be more than just a move that ends a match. It's a maneuver that also drives home a wrestler's character and defines their legacy. Mm -hmm. While fans love iconic finishes such as the Stone Cold Stunner or the Rock Bottom, there are superstars of the past and present who have used less than stellar maneuvers to get the three count. However, there seem to be good reason as to why these superstars changed up their finishes. Join us now as WrestleMania looks at nine WWE finishes that had to be changed immediately. Subscribe to WrestleMania if you haven't already. Be sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell for daily wrestling videos and follow us on Facebook for exclusive lists. Also check out our new website, WrestleMania.com. Number one, Hideo Itami slash Kenta go to sleep. The GTS. the GTS is one of the most infamous moves in pro wrestling. Why? Because of Mr. Coulter personality himself, CM Punk single-handedly made the finisher famous thanks to his time in WWE. However, a Japanese wrestler named Kenta was the man who invented the GTS. Before his WWE run as Hideo Itami, Kenta was one of the hottest Japanese wrestlers on the indie circuit thanks to classic matches against legends such as Mitsuharu Misawa. That iconic feud saw the birth of the GTS and it's become a well-known finisher for the Jeez. New Japan star. But fast forward to 2014 and Kenta signed a NXT contract. By this time, CM Punk was gone from the company, so it wasn't a surprise that WWE officials weren't keen on him using the GTS because it reminded them of CM Punk. Mm -hmm. However, as time passed, AAA built anticipation for the move until he finally hit it on Austin Aries at NXT TakeOver Brooklyn 2. Since then, that became a staple part of Atami's finisher until he moved up to the main roster. He hit Brian Kendrick once with the GTS, and that was it. Kendrick suffered a broken orbital bone, and he was never Jeez. allowed to use the GTS again. Ooh. Brian Kendrick recalled the incident during his appearance on High Spot's virtual gimmick table show and made it clear that Atami was very apologetic following the incident. Yeah. However, that didn't matter to WWE officials. For four years, he was banned from using the very move that he invented until he left WWE in 2017. And Kenta hasn't been shy about his time in the company, with the New Japan star even stating that the worst experience he's dealt with in the wrestling business was being banned from using the very move he created. Number two, Samoa. Yeah, and that, that, that sucks. That that really does suck. Being banned from using a move that you created, uh, especially, you know, you know, just creating a move that, you know, is just looks brutal, devastating, and is very popular. Obviously, it's not popular because of you. It's popular because of somebody else. But still, that that sucks. I know that that probably rubbed him the wrong way. And it's unfortunate. Obviously, he wasn't trying to injure uh brian kendrick but it, it you know wwe they're they're very you know strict on certain stuff especially if someone gets injured um even if it, obviously it's not on purpose they're gonna be you know like hey you probably shouldn't be using that move anymore so it's unfortunate but that's how you know i don't know if they're like that now but i'm willing to bet i'm sure they they're probably very protective of certain moves if it injure people that they don't want them to use on a regular so Joe Muscle Buster. Now, speaking of band moves, the Muscle Buster mm -hmm. and Samoa Joe are synonymous with one another. Mm -hmm. The Samoan Submission Machine has won numerous battles with the finisher, including his unforgettable TNA World Title win against Kurt Angle at Lockdown 2008. Joe continued to use the Muscle yep. Buster when he signed with WWE in 2015, but then a freak accident that ended Tyson Kidd's career yeah. put the Muscle Buster on the ban list. In June of 2015, oh, Kid and Joe had a dark match and Joe used his signature muscle buster finisher. Oh, Kid suffered man. a severe neck injury, immediately went to surgery. 
Thankfully, the former WWE star made a miraculous recovery as this was a life-threatening injury yeah. that only 5% of people survive. Woo. Joe did use the muscle buster on several occasions following the scary incident, including feuds against Finn Balor and Shinsuke Nakamura. However, Joe's go-to finisher became the Coquina Clutch, which still worked out for the former WWE yeah. star, but wasn't as dynamic or devastating as the muscle buster. Number three. And that was, a, that was an unfortunate situation. Um... Granted, that co uh, coquina clutch still works and it fits his persona of choking someone out while talking shit to him. But obviously, the muscle buster, when you saw it, you knew, all right, somebody's about to get KO'd from this. And it, it looks devastating, to be honest with you. So it was just unfortunate what to happen um, on why he can't use it anymore. But, uh, you know, it's part of the wrestling business, man. It's, it's dangerous stepping in between those ropes. Chris Jericho, Lion Tamer. The Lion Salt and the Lion Tamer have been in Chris Jericho's arsenal for decades. Mm -hmm. Then time passed on, the Lion Tamer slowly transitioned to a simple Boston Crab that was labeled as the Walls of Jericho. Yeah. A Jericho's Lion Tamer was never banned as he would bust out the original submission move here and there during his WWE run. However, according to the former WWE champion himself, the move was harder to use on larger opponents, which is why he opted for the Boston Crab instead. Yeah. And Chris Jericho was a huge fixture in WCW's cruiserweight division, so he didn't particularly run into that issue much there. It's understandable why Jericho had to change his moveset in order to suit the bigger man in WWE, even if that change was just a glorified version of the Boston Crab. Yeah, Number it makes four, sense. Randy Orton, the punk kick. Oh, Randy bring it back. Bring it back. It was... It was it was nice to see it when he brought it back. Uh, I think during the pandemic he had brought it back for a little bit. He was kicking legends in the skull again. It was Chef's kiss. Bring it back, bro. Orton is a veteran in the WWE, having a career that has spanned over many eras. His RKO is one of the most widely known wrestling moves ever. It's a devastating finisher that has had a number of variations over the years. Mm -hmm. However, for a brief time, Orton used an even more devastating finisher. A finisher that was considered incredibly brutal. Yes. Too brutal, in fact, that Vince ba McMahon outright banned the finisher. Now, Orton did, however, manage to get the finisher back. Yep. Orton made sure the move was now safe enough to use on the likes of Ric Flair and Shawn Michaels, as the consequences of the move going wrong could lead to severe damage. Yeah. Number five, Dean Ambrose. And I, I hope he, he starts utilizing it. Whenever, I think it's more of a move that works as when he's a heel. As a baby face, yeah, he can still use it, but it works better as a heel because you're trying to legitimately give someone CTE and try to end their career. Like, it's a move that once you get hit with it, you shouldn't be around on television for a while. Like, you got concussed. Per move, you got concussed, got hit with the CTE at his finest. So I think, you know, if he does bring it back, it needs to be when he's a heel trying to destroy a baby face or whatever the case may be. So those dirty deeds. Dean Ambrose was always an interesting cast in the WWE. The former WWE champion made an immediate impact by debuting alongside Roman Reigns and Seth Rollins during the main event of Survivor Series 2012. Mm -hmm. Ambrose's moveset perfectly fit with his character, a scrappy and crazed pit bull who was the furthest thing from a clean fighter. So when he used the original Dirty Deeds, a headlock driver, it was a mm -hmm. rather simple finisher that fits into his personality, and it even looked devastating. Yeah. But over time, Dirty Deeds turned into a simple underhook DDT. Yeah. On one hand, it was a nice homage to Mick Foley, the man that he was originally supposed to feud with in his WWE debut. But why did it change? Well, blame Randy Orton, or at least his height. As in an interview with Fightful, Ambrose mentioned, the headlock driver's awesome if you got the right guy doing it to the right guy. It can be the nastiest, coldest pile driver looking thing in the world, or if the guy is taller than you, which so many of the guys in the WWE were taller than me, it can just be really awkward and stupid looking. I think I gave it to Randy Orton one time, who is someone with a significant height advantage on me. It was just awkward. I was like, that's it. I'm switching this <laughs> oh, wow. up. Number six. So that's why he switched it up. Now it makes sense. Because I was wondering why he had switched it up, and then he just went with a double arm drag DDT, which... In my opinion, it's like, eh, because DDTs are like, nowadays, back in the day, they used to be like impactful and you would believe it would finish an opponent. Nowadays, everybody uses it. It's like a damn near setup move. So when he switched it, I was like, 
if the other one made sense because he's kind of leading in with the person's head, this one is just like, ah, I mean, they tried to make it work as best they could. I prefer his original one, but it makes sense if someone's taller than you and there's a lot of tall guys in WWE, uh, it would kind of look a little bit weird. Kevin Owens pop up power. Oh man. One of the most memorable debuts in NXT was Kevin Owens' yep. shocking heel turn after Sami Zayn's bah. big win for the <laughs> NXT Championship. Owens power bombed Zayn onto the apron and there was legitimate concern that the newly crowned NXT champion was injured. So His good. His pop-up power bomb was built up as an extremely devastating finisher that has put several names on the injured list, including John Cena, Daniel Bryan, and yeah. Shane McMahon. That's presumably why it had been moved to a signature move instead. The stunner worked perfectly for Stone Cold Steve Austin, and though Owens performs the move correctly, it never looks as dangerous or devastating as yeah. a pop-up powerbomb. That yeah. finisher was not just a great-looking move, but it effectively put Owens as a credible main eventer. Hopefully, he gets the spotlight as his primary finisher again. Number seven. Yeah, I hope so. Bring it back, but in sparingly. But I, I think it most likely works once again. Him as a heel. Because you have to really want to end somebody by th picking them up and throwing them spine first into the edge of the ring. So right now he's a baby face. If you turn him heel and have him go rogue on someone and do that to someone, I think you can you can make that work. Uh, once again, some of these finishers, signatures, whatever you want to call them, it depends on if you're a heel or not, where it will make sense to do some of these moves, if that makes any sense. Ricochet Double Moonsault Ricochet was a wild man before his WWE days. If you thought his moves were impressive now, go back and watch some of his bouts in Lucha Underground oh, or yeah. his fame match against Will Ospreay and New Japan Pro Wrestling. A ricochet is a human highlight reel, Ooh. not surprisingly, he slowed down moveset when he signed his WWE contract in 2018. Every now and then, Ricochet will pull out an old indie such as a double moonsault That's in 2018's crazy. NXT War Games. Ricochet's standard Insanity. finisher is a 630, but the double moonsault was typically his normal finisher on the indie scene. That move by itself is simply a thing of beauty and a yeah. flasher and more impressive maneuver than the 630. However, Ricochet mentioned in an interview with Chris Van Vliet that he simply doesn't want to do the move anymore due to its risky nature. Mm. Honestly, probably only the double moonsault maybe, and that's not even... Honestly, I could probably still do it if I wanted to, but I don't want to. I, I don't want to. I did it off the cage. I would have actually taken some time to practice, really practice, because it's just one of those that's not used often. I was just asked the other day when was the last time I even did it. I couldn't tell you the last time that I did the double moonsault. I don't know. Other than the one-off on the cage at NXT, before that, even like in the ring, man, I can tell you. Number eight, Seth. I love that move, by the way. Such a beautiful move, but hey, if he wants to pull back on it and he doesn't want to risk it as much, hey, man, who am I to tell him? It's a beautiful move. If he does pull it out once for every full moon, cool. If he doesn't, it's fine. Ricochet is a very talented wrestler, very talented individual. And he has plenty of other moves and high-flying acrobatics that you can enjoy, even if he doesn't pull that out. So, Rollins curb stomp. Ah, oh, yeah. Remember that awkward period when WWE stripped Seth Rollins of the curb stomp? Uh huh. Well, reportedly, Vince McMahon opted to ban the move because he felt that young children could easily imitate the finisher. And whilst it was banned for some time, the curb stomp is perfect for Rollins. It was a nice tool for him as a cowardly heel, as he could yeah, easily come out worked. of nowhere and nail his finisher. It was also an effective finisher for him as a babyface because the stomp always looks so devastating and cool. And number nine, Triple H. Yeah. And then they brought it back anyway. <laughs> they just don't call it the curb stomp. They just call it the stomp now. They literally brought it back. Because <laughs> at one point he was using a Triple H pedigree, which is like, eh. And we know, you know, Triple H is mentored and all this other stuff. He was using that for a while, but they brought it back. They brought the stomp back. It's just not curb stomp. It's just stomp now. So it works. It now it works for him as a baby face. It works for him as a baby face, though. <laughs> but back then, I, I loved him when they he was first using it and they called it the curb stomp. I thought it fit him perfectly. It was great. Original pedigree. A Triple H's mastery of the pedigree has earned him numerous victories and accolades throughout his WWE career. It has become synonymous with his name and has solidified his place as one of the all-time greats in pro wrestling. 
However, the pedigree we saw throughout his late years in WWE was completely different to the one he used during the start. Fans got a glimpse of this devastating version of the move when he wrestled Marty Garner on WWE Superstars. Rather than just release the whole body on top of the mat after underhooking the wrestler's arms, Triple H would devastatingly spike the head right into the mat yeah. and subsequently Ooh. injured his neck. Triple H had then since changed the move and it worked in his favor as some of the guys in WWE were huge and there's no way that he could have spiked pile drive them right yeah. on their head. But there yeah. you have it folks, 9 finish- He had to change it. It made sense. There was no way. Hell no. <laughs> super dangerous too so but it worked out in the end and pedigree is one of the most synonymous finishers literally of all time so comment down below let me know what's your favorite wrestling finisher of all time doesn't matter what company doesn't matter what era of wrestling and let me know your favorite finisher when you saw it you just knew damn that person is done for the match is over or you just thought it looked cool and devastating let me know down below but i appreciate all the love and support guys showing on channel road to 150k and i'm still in speedy youtube wrestling champ of the world appreciate y'all keeping me see y'all next one peace